Howdy, welcome back to Slide Bites. Playing something very much not a budget guitar today, <laughs> despite what uh, Fender uh, calls this thing. This is the uh, Fender Player uh, Strat, uh, Stratcaster HSS configuration, my favorite configuration. Sporting uh, your humbucker up front and two single coil pickups. Uh, Really, honestly, this is my dream guitar. My wife surprised me out of nowhere. She came home with this. Uh, actually, she didn't come home with it. She showed up on the front door porch. Um, uh, saw, uh, saw her run out on the front porch on our, our uh, security cameras. She smiled all day and take off running with a, a box that said Fender. I was there at work. I was like, <laughs> just kind of stand there, my jaw, jaw drop. So yeah, uh, my wife went out and surprised me with my dream guitar. I, for years, have been wanting a, a Fender Stratocaster. You know, I have all the Squires. I have that Kramer S-Type. Uh, looking guitar, the Focus, but I've really been wanting an actual Fender Player Strat um, for a long time. Uh, a lot of people will probably like, dude, it's a player, you know, the, the Made in Mexico, why not the American version? Well, because even these are moving up to, she got this for six seventy nine from Guitar Center's biggest sale, uh, just like ended a week ago. Um, this thing literally what, is six seventy nine then. I think it's like seven fifty now. Uh, looking around the web, some of these are nine hundred and nine dollars, depending on who you're shopping through. So this is, in my opinion, Fender considers this their entry level or budget level guitar. I uh, I don't see it that way. Uh, I see this more as a uh, in, in, a, in a, a world where most people don't have five hundred dollars to drop for an emergency bill. I, I find that almost a laughable assertion that. Uh, that uh, nine hundred dollars a budget guitar. But anyway, let's move over here next to Woody because he's gonna get irritated at me if I don't sit next to him. You guys are familiar with all Sheriff Woody here, so here we go. So what is it about this guitar that I love? Well, first off, look at that beautiful, beautiful flame maple top. I mean, that is a gorgeous guitar. Blue burst. This is just. I mean, everything about this is my dream. I wanted a white strap for a long time, but it feels like everyone has a white strap caster. Like everyone. And this just stands out a lot more. And honestly, the color wasn't a huge thing. I just, I'm not a big tobacco burst kind of guy, but I will say that in general, um, I think strats just always look good regardless of the coloring. But yeah, this is a beautiful guitar. Uh, I got your standard 9.5 radius, uh, 20, uh, 25 and a half inch uh, scale length, two point trim, which is the, uh, more uh, modern Fender uh, tremolo styles, those six screws that uh, are on all the vintage style tremolos. I prefer this, it's a lot easier to adjust. Um, not that I have any problem with the six screw type, the vintage style, because I've been, have, I've been using those for so long now at this point, it's kind of second hat, uh, or second nature, or whatever, to uh, work on those. Standard tuner is not locking, doesn't really matter to me. Uh, it's not that expensive to put locking ones on here if you so choose, but yeah. Alnico five single coil pickups, really cool. Um, that obviously we were discussing that in the last video I did about the Kramer. Um, Focus they went with Alnico five single coils and the bridge pickup on that. Very unusual for a guitar in that price range. In this price range, you kind of expect some decent pickups. These are good pickups. I think they sound. <laughs> Sorry, that was the bridge. <laughs> We're playing in double drop D. That is position four, so we are using uh, the neck and the middle uh, pickup. This is just now moved it to position five, so let's listen to that. sounding pickups I really like them and we'll just listen to position uh, three here real quick and just hear what they sound like uh, on that middle so much clarity very very bell like and they blend well uh, with the Alnico 2 in the humbucker uh, here which is very unusual for me. I've never had a, a Alnico 2 uh, humbucking pickup in any of my guitars. Um, I have the Alnico 5 and the Kramer, but this is something new. My Squire Bullet is a, um, 
uh, I believe it's just a standard ceramic humbucker and it is really meaty and powerful. I typically prefer ceramics. I wasn't sure what I was going to hear when I plugged in. I, I, I knew I wanted a fat strat, which is, this is HSS configuration is a fat strat. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where I really wanted one of these, and I I had I have had experience with them, but I've never used them with them as much gain as what I I had uh, preferred to use. Everyone knows I do a lot of blues, but I really love my metal music too. And I wasn't sure what I was going to get, but if you listen to that intro, and uh, I was that was my Bad Monkey into the Ultra Metal from Behringer, and uh, holy cow. <laughs> This thing has so much clarity on that bridge pickup. You can hear every note that's played. It has a really good harmonic response. It's meaty. It's powerful. I don't think... It just wants to go. I'm, I'm on it right now. And it just... it. You can just hear it even in this super clean channel uh, acoustic lead series G120 TSP with two 12-inch speakers. You can just hear it wanting to push that thing. Bassy and it's 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 just I'm running these without any effects on it at the moment other than just a little dash reverb in the amp because I want you to be able to hear what these on Eco two five pickups sound like uh, so you can get a good taste and hearing uh, for what it was when we were in the intro I was going through different bridge or different pickup positions and at first we were using both the uh, Bad Monkey from Digitech and the Ultra Metal. And I turned that off and just went to the Bad Monkey to give you just a little bit like grip for some bluesy and some twangy country kind of sound and stuff, rockabilly, and then went perfectly clean. And I think y y this is why I love Strats so much. They just do everything. There's nothing that they don't do musically. Um, and I, I love that about them. They're just gorgeous. This is obviously a Mexican-made Strat. Uh, and quality was right up there with what I would expect. The only couple gripes I had and it, it, this is very minor stuff, but I was kind of a little jarred that it was like this, was that these frets were not very flattened out or caught, like, you know, smoothed out to be level with the actual neck. They were, you could feel them as you went down. They weren't scratchy. I won't, and there's only one fret on this whole neck that was kind of scratchy. It kind of catched the skin just a little bit. Nothing cut me. Nothing was like nearly as bad as what I dealt with the, with the Kramer Focus or anything like that. It's just, you could just, just definitely feel them. They were definitely there. It took me longer to put uh, protective uh, painter's tape on this than it did to actually just take a sanding block and some steel wool and just go down a couple times and just, it, now it's like perfect. It, I mean, it's right up there with anything else. But a little small gripe that I wish that had been a little bit more polished through there, but not a big deal. Now it has my own little uh, rolled <laughs> feel to it uh, that I do with a lot of my guitars anyway. So uh, it probably would have happened regardless of whether those were there or not. So it wasn't a big deal. And the uh, string six E string it had a little bit of fret buzz, and I, I raised that saddle and raised the trim just a little bit, the bridge a little bit, and everything is all good. I mean, I just, I love this thing. I like that when you roll the tone off on this. It stays perfectly usable. It just stays perfectly usable on that bridge. And that tone is dedicated to the bridge. Um, it's just, everything sounds good. This is a very nice trim system. Uh, it stays pretty well in tune. Used a lot, you're going to go out of tune because it's not locking, obviously, but it, for the most part, just... Just little bits aren't going to gonna mess with anything. We are playing in double drop D, seems to be handling that just fine. I'm not even sure what I'm, I'm going to settle on for tuning on this. Uh, we have a 22 fret neck. Again, no complaints there. I'm usually even happy with just the 21 frets. 22 is just fine. Uh, and 24 obviously being like for metal guys just like the thing but to me it, it i'm not usually up here doing all the stuff i i just i'm not that good <laughs> anyway so as far as i'm concerned you know i almost think 
I, at first I was like, man, wait, a rosewood neck would look better, but actually, no, I, I think this contrasts and looks so great with the pickups and everything. Just, this is a very nice guitar. Um, I do kind of wish that this back plate had the slots so I could just work on the screws myself, you know, without having to take this whole plate off, but it's not a big deal. It doesn't really matter. Um, solid all over body with the flame maple uh, top, which is a very thin thing. Uh, yeah, it just sounds good. I, I, I'm, I'm honestly kind of speechless that it's here. I, I got this earlier in the week, and I, I spent two hours straight just playing this guitar last night, and I've been trying to play it every night since then. And this neck is a modern C, and it's just so smooth and soft to play. Um, it feels a lot like it's kind of in between like a Squire Bullet or that Jackson V kind of a feel. It's a very fast, very smooth neck. And I, is it kind of like a satin, I don't know if it's a satin or thing, is that what they call it? I, I don't, something like that, finished neck, very soft. And uh, it is a glossy coat on the fretboard, but the actual neck itself is completely uh, satin finished. So it's super soft. Um, yeah, I, I just love this guitar, guys. It, it plays so well. I, I have no trouble with that. Some people like a, a different radius on these necks. I think the 9.5 is fine. <laughs> I just, I don't think I'm ever gonna have any issues with that radius at all. I think everything's on this just fine. Um, I think the player series is honestly the best value for these Fender guitars. You get a real deal Fender for a, the best price you're gonna get them. And if you see them on sale right now, go for it while you can get them because these are just going up and up and up and up with the way guitar prices are right now. It's kind of all over the place. And um, I am, I'm blessed to have this and I'm super thankful to my wife for, for getting me my dream guitar. The only thing missing in my dream rig is my, my Blackstar 2 amp. <laughs> I want so bad. Maybe someday. That's one of the things about this channel. I support, everything I do is my own funding, my, my, and my wife's funding. We, we do everything. I don't have anyone helping me or providing anything for me unless my wife just wants to be really nice and get me random gifts like this. Uh, so everything I do, you know, I hardly consider this a budget. I, I work a full-time job. Uh, just like anyone else, I hardly consider this a budget guitar, um, and I know Fender kind of does, but to me, this is something that if you have the money you can aff to afford something like this, and you just need a guitar, and you, maybe you don't need a bunch, it's hard to go wrong with something in the HSS configuration and a name brand like Fender. I, I mean, the most if the most disappointing thing about this guitar was that I could feel the fret edges, and that's a, literally less than five minutes of fin fixing that. I, and this is the highest quality sounding guitar I <laughs> own. I'm just gonna put it out there. Those on the, that on Eco Two humbucker blew me away. I've never had anything sound so definitive and so with so much definition, so much clarity before. No matter what I do, gain or not. So uh, there is gonna be plenty of playing videos about this guitar or with this guitar, utilizing it in the future. I've got some more ideas, you know, shot, uh, showing this up ahead or up against other types of guitars like it and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll delve into this. This wasn't the video that was planned for this week but when things like this show up you just kind of got to talk about. It. So anyway guys thanks for watching. This is Slide Bites. This has you know been super fun. I'm glad people are, are have been watching the channel and enjoying it. Uh, I, I'm just trying to provide you guys good information on guitars at, at least a decent price. I'm probably not going to make a habit of discussing guitars outside over 500 bucks because I just don't think that that's really what, or gear over 500 bucks because that's just not really the budget uh, or what I consider to be budget. I don't consider anything over 500 to be budget. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, so thanks again for watching Slide Bites. Uh, if you like the channel, if I've earned it, you know, give drop a like and subscribe. Uh, keep watching for more content coming up in the future. Appreciate you all so much. Stay tuned for more. Keep sharing partners. Bye. Happy Halloween.